Hi and welcome back to Free Science Lessons. By the end of this video you should be able to describe the function of tissue fluid. You should then be able to describe how tissue fluid is formed. And if you're following the OCR or Edexcel specs, you should be able to describe what's meant by oncotic pressure. And finally, you should be able to describe the function of lymph fluid. Now, in order to understand this topic, we first need to take a look at what's found in blood. I should point out that we'll be looking at the blood in much more detail in later videos. Blood consists of two main parts. First, we have blood cells, such as red blood cells which transport oxygen, and white blood cells which play a role in the immune system. We also have cell fragments called platelets, which are involved in blood clotting. Blood cells are suspended in a watery solution, which scientists call blood plasma. Blood plasma contains a range of dissolved molecules, such as glucose, amino acids, and mineral ions, such as the sodium ion Na+. Blood plasma also contains dissolved oxygen, which diffuses out of the red blood cells. Now, another very important part of blood plasma are proteins, such as albumin. Scientists refer to these as plasma proteins, and we'll be looking at these later in this video. Now, we've already seen that blood is carried from the heart to the body tissues in arteries. In the body tissues, the blood passes through narrow, thin-walled blood vessels called capillaries, before returning to the heart in veins. Now, a key idea you need to understand is that in the capillaries, fluid passes out of the blood and bathes the tissue cells. Scientists call this tissue fluid. Tissue fluid leaves the blood at the part of the capillary which are near the artery. Tissue fluid transfers molecules such as oxygen and glucose to the tissue cells. Waste molecules from the tissue cells, such as carbon dioxide, pass into the tissue fluid. The tissue fluid then returns back to the bloodstream at the parts of the capillary which are near the vein. You need to be able to explain how tissue fluid transfers in and out of the blood. I'm showing you here a close-up of a blood capillary. On the left-hand side, we have blood which has just moved into the capillary from the arterial end of the capillary bed. And on the right-hand side, we have blood which is about to leave the capillary via a vein. Remember that the capillary wall consists of a single layer of endothelial cells and a basement membrane. And between the endothelial cells, there are tiny gaps. Now, in this diagram, I'm showing the red blood cells but I'm now going to remove them to make things clearer. Now, as we've seen, tissue fluid is forced out of the blood at the arterial end of the blood capillary and returns back to the blood at the venous end of the blood capillary. Now, in order to understand this process, we need to look at two competing factors. These are called hydrostatic pressure and oncotic pressure. I should point out that if you're following the AQA spec, you don't need to use the term oncotic pressure but you should be able to describe it. We're going to start by looking at the arterial end of the capillary, where tissue fluid is formed. At the arterial end of the capillary, the blood has just passed through an artery and an arteriole. So because of this, the blood at the arterial end of the capillary is still under relatively high pressure. Scientists call this hydrostatic pressure. Hydrostatic pressure tends to force fluid out of the blood and into the tissue. Now, remember that in the blood plasma, we have plasma proteins such as albumin. Plasma proteins are hydrophilic, so they lower the water potential of the blood plasma. So, because of the plasma proteins, there's a tendency for water to move back into the blood by osmosis. And scientists call this the oncotic pressure. Now, the key fact you need to understand is that at the arterial end of the capillary, the hydrostatic pressure is greater than the oncotic pressure. This means that tissue fluid is forced out of the capillary through the gaps between the endothelial cells. Scientists call this process ultrafiltration. Blood cells and plasma proteins are too large to leave, so they remain in the blood plasma. OK, now at the venous end of the capillary, the hydrostatic pressure is much lower, and that's because a large amount of water has left the blood. However, the oncotic pressure is still high due to the plasma proteins in the blood plasma. So because of this, at the venous end, the hydrostatic pressure is less than the oncotic pressure, and this causes water to move back into the blood by osmosis. Now, around 90% of the tissue fluid is reabsorbed back into the blood. However, the remaining 10% of tissue fluid 
drains into a series of blind-ended vessels called lymph capillaries. And lymph capillaries connect into larger lymph vessels, forming the lymphatic system. Lymph fluid moves along when lymph vessels are squeezed by nearby skeletal muscles. And valves in the lymph vessels help to keep the lymph fluid moving forward. Eventually, the lymph fluid returns to the bloodstream via blood vessels under the collarbone. The lymphatic system also plays a role in immunity, and we look at that in a later topic. Okay, so hopefully now you can describe the function and formation of tissue fluid and lymph fluid. Thank you.